Check it out, it's my new riprap machine. Wait, this isn't civil engineering, this is 3D printing. That is a riprap printer. <laughs> The rep rap movement, of course, being started by Dr. Adrian Boyer in 2004-2005, and one of his students was Dr. Ed Sells. Well, he wasn't a doctor yet, but Dr. Ed Sells invented the Mendel printer. Prusa, Joseph Prusa himself, saw that project and tweaked it a little bit, small little things here and there, put a little polish on it, and called it the Prusa Mendel. Now, the Prusa Mendel changed and morphed and um, got better over the years. And this here is the Prusa Mendel i3 Mark III, the third iteration and the third version of the third iteration. And it is quite polished, you guys. It's, uh, it's very impressive. But does it live up to the hype? If you go on any form anywhere on the internet and you ask people what is the best 3D printer that they can get, they're gonna tell you it's this one. So I don't necessarily agree. I mean, there are some really great things about this printer. We're going to go over them, but I think it's a bit overhyped, you guys. And why? I don't know. It could just be a network effect. There really could just be fanboys out there for Prusa. Um, there could be a lot of people out there who are open source aficionados who just really believe in open source and they see Prusa as their champion. I think that is misplaced as well, but we'll, we'll talk about that later on. Um, but I don't know. Whatever the reasons, maybe it's sock puppets. I've made that allegation many times in the past. There doesn't seem to be any more sock puppets left. I think they've all kind of been weeded out. Maybe the YouTube algorithm is doing its thing or I don't know what, but it's mostly real people these days leaving the hateful comments when you dare to say that Prusa might not be as good as everybody says it is. So, dissent. <laughs> you gotta tolerate dissent. Let's talk about the issues. Don't be attacking people who say that a machine doesn't live up to the hype. That's, that's not a reason to personally attack somebody. Anyway, let's jump back in time to a couple of days ago when I received this printer in pieces and I needed to assemble it myself. In the milk crate here is a Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus. This has been sitting in my neighbor's basement for a year or more. So my neighbor is an IT professional and when he decided to get into 3D printing, before he met me, <laughs> uh, he basically went on the forums, on the IT forums, where all the guys there seem to share the consensus that is widely spread across the internet, that if you are a newbie to 3D printing, you really want to start with Prusa printers. It's the most painless way to get the absolute best printer out there. See, these detailed, super detailed instructions, and it's one of those can't see the forest for the trees things. All these, all this page, all of it could have just been summed up in one picture. So it's taken me 40 minutes to get the frame to this state, if you can believe it. I'm not using the tool that came in the box, I'm using these things. A second sheet that I'm doing is using my um, caliper here to measure the length of the bolt because you can see it tells me to use like four of these, um, what is it, M3 by 10 millimeter screws, but um, they're all just kind of, you know, assorted in that pile that came in the little baggie, um, you know, just like all these others. See, there's, there's another um, bunch of bolts, assorted nuts and bolts in a baggie. So uh, there's no way to, to know for certain the length of them, so I'm having to measure them. And I don't know, maybe maybe I missed that. Did I miss that? I should look back in the, in the manual here and see if there's a little, like, ruler gauge for, uh, for measuring nuts and bolts. And the final way that I'm cheating is to use this electronic screwdriver here to get the, um, the bolts seated. And then I'm giving, you know, the full torque, the fully, fully tightening them down using the tool that came in the box with the printer. Okay, this is a fiddly and horrible design. This is very difficult to deal with. I'm trying to get the belt um, fully attached here. I've had to basically take this apart and I still can't quite get that bolt in because the wrench that they sent me doesn't work. Even though it's got the ball end, it can't make it past the frame here. So I'm having to try to use the short end and having to tighten it, take it out, tighten it, take it out. So I'm spending like 10 to 15 minutes just fighting with the belt here. It's horrible. Let's talk about this manual for a minute. What is with Joseph Prusa's likeness being distributed everywhere throughout this? Like, what does this even mean? I don't even understand why his image has to be places. Is he approving or disapproving of my work or what is going on with that? Doesn't make any sense. And how about this? 
Oh, it's a lighthearted joke. They're telling you step by step how to eat the Haribo gummy bears that come in the package. The, the guy who lent me this printer, he already ate the gummy bears, so I don't get them. But still, that is insulting. So this manual, just incredibly detailed in a bad way. Like the the step-by-step -step instructions are for any old idiot. But if you are getting into the hobby of 3D printing, you aren't any old idiot. You have some problem-solving skills and the the instructions are just insulting. This is an insult and it can be fun if this was a 10 year old building this printer. I could see how that could be fun. The 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 process itself, the, 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 the fiddly nature of it is kind of fun in a way for a 10 year old, for a toy, for a project that's just there to pass the time like doing a jigsaw puzzle or something like that. But I thought that Prusa printers were the choice of professionals. I thought that this was the best printer on the market, not a toy. So I'm seeing a mismatch here between what they're telling you that the printer is online, it's the professional best printer that you can get, versus what the manual and the, the project is all about, which is more of a fun toy. This instruction set sounds like a former boss that I had who micromanaged me and would try to make a joke out of the micromanagement. Like he would take micromanagement even further than he did on a day-to-day -day basis to try to lighten things up. But it, it didn't work. Like I knew what he was doing. He was a micromanager who was even more micromanaging and I was even more insulted. So ugh, this just rubs me the wrong way. Okay, this is not good design. See that slit back there in the corner? I've got to get this nut right here which, you know, is significantly smaller than my fingers, and I've got to get it slid into that, that slit there. And it's also um, kind of a tight fit. So even using needle-nose pliers, that's going to be a super fiddly task. It's not a good thing to force your customers to fight with a fiddly task like that. These two pieces must have been an addition to the kit after they printed up the instructions. Using my fancy pliers here, I was able to get the small magnet into this fiddly little piece, and I do not know how I would have accomplished that task without these pliers. They're parallel jaws, so the motion on them is uh, really good. Plus, they open really wide, so that would have been incredibly difficult. I don't know. You would have had to find some other tool, maybe a bench vise or something. So they are not giving you enough tools in the box to really uh, easily build this printer. All right, getting the extruder assembled, I'm actually pretty impressed the um, gear here sits perfectly flush with the top of that stepper motor and the um, Allen key goes right through the slot and lines up perfectly with the uh, the filament path. So just really great attention to detail. I gotta say, it looks like everybody who worked on these printers um, just really cares and the quality control is really good. So um, my hat goes off to everybody involved there at Prusa, you guys are doing a good job. 180 degrees from Chinese quality. Like, this is really good. Even though fundamentally, the whole construction system is overly complicated, and this whole idea of this is like 15 years old from the very, you know, first days of the RepRap movement. Um, this is just antiquated as far as the build technique goes, but the guys who are forced to work with this kit and get this in the mail are doing a really good job. I'm really not liking this. It's tough to get in here to see what's going on with the board. I feel like the whole thing should be facing to the outside so I can easily access everything. So this case flips open to the inside and I've got to get my screwdriver on these screw terminals from the inside. It's just, it's fiddly. It's not made so that the customer has an easy time of it. All right, this is a nice touch. So this self setup algorithm is really impressive. I can't figure out how it's doing the end stops. I don't know if it's using sensorless homing or maybe the pin to probe with the magnets embedded in the bed. Really impressive work by the computer scientists programming this printer at Prusa. My hat goes off to those guys. So these bearings on the printer make a lot of noise. And that's why I've partially disassembled the printer and using this um, grease applicator, I'm actually trying to fill the bearings up with grease. Even though the manual tells me I did not need to do this step, I thought maybe if the bearings had a lot of grease on them, uh, it wouldn't be quite so noisy. 
All right, my first print on the Prusa printer is done. Of course, it has Joseph Prusa's initials on it because why not feed that guy's ego? And, you know, being the sample print, it's perfectly sliced, and I'm sure it's a perfect print, except for that random tail there. <whistles> yep, super loud. It's a thing. Yeah, look at that, that filament's not doing so well. Stringy, stringy, but the print is perfect, sliced very well. And the printer's working great. I just looked up the price for the Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus, and it's $750. I don't know about shipping. Now, to give you guys an idea, this is a Chinese-made 3D printer. Uh, if you look in the description down below, you'll find the, um, the, the whole video, the whole review video about this. But I've put it back in the box, in the original packaging, because I'm mailing it to my former boss, he needs to be able to print bicycle helmets. Um, that's what he does for a living, he's an industrial designer. So um, yeah, this is a, gonna be a gift to him. And so before I send it back to him though, I'm gonna take it back out of the box here and rebuild it and time myself. This is an $800 kit. So let's see what $50 more will get you. This printer is so much bigger than the Prusa. I think it's 400 millimeters cubed in X, Y, and Z. So. Yeah, pretty much the Prusa fits in the build volume. Okay, so I could assemble 32 of the Magician Pros in the time that it took me to assemble just a single Prusa. And I think the Magician Pro here looks a lot better than the Prusa as well because the Prusa has all of those 3D printed components, which to me look like I could have made them, <laughs> okay? And that's the way it was meant to be because the Prusa is a project from 10 years ago, 15 years ago now, it's getting really old in the tooth. And back in the day, 3D printers were supposed to 3D print themselves. But now we're getting into professional style printers like the Magician Pro here. But I hear you saying the Prusa has all the features that this Chinese printer doesn't have. Well, I'm gonna talk about useful features, okay? Having to manually level a large bed doesn't work. Beds twist and warp, and it's just really hard to get them level. Well, this printer here has an auto bed leveling feature just like the Prusa. And I do have to wait. It's got to get that bed up to 50 degrees for this test. So that is one thing, in all honesty, that this printer lacks compared to the Prusa. Speed. It's a lot slower. Not only this whole startup algorithm, as it's actually probing the bed, it's going to be slower. And printing, it's going to be slower because of moving this heavy, large bed back and forth. It just cannot print quickly to maintain the same quality as the Prusa. So you can see it started to measure the grid of points here. And how is it measuring? It is so cool, you guys. It's measuring using the nozzle itself. It's touching the nozzle to the print surface. In contrast, the way that the Prusa works is with this Pinda probe is what they call it. So this inductive sensor right here measures the magnetism of the magnets which are embedded in the PCB and it has to compensate for the distance, the thickness of this print surface. So that requires calibration, which was part of the startup routine that I showed you guys. You have to calibrate this thing manually. This printer here, no calibration, zero calibration because it's measuring the actual nozzle where the filament is getting spit out of. So I could slap another print surface on top of this bed right here and it would touch that print surface. So much simpler. Okay, so you don't have $800 to spend on a 3D printer, and the printable volume of a Prusa is about right. Why not get an Ender 3? This is the printer that everybody's gonna tell you to get instead of a Prusa, and for good reason. Now, I'm in the middle of modifying this. Yours will not look like this out of the box. Now, when you first get an Ender 3, you will have to manually level the bed using these knobs underneath the bed and a piece of paper. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt. However, link in the description, go watch my video where I show you how to put this Allen key probe on your printer so that you have touch bed leveling with your Ender 3 for $20, one quarter the cost of a Prusa, and you have all the useful features of a Prusa. It's just not worth it to spend $800 when you have other options available to you. So I could go over this printer feature by feature, and I could tell you why it is just so antiquated. Uh, you know, technology moves fast in the year 2022. And I could talk about things like 
the lack of rigidity in 3D printed parts. Although you wouldn't really notice it on this printer. It still prints fantastically. How about that E3D V6 hot end in there? That is definitely antiquated today. We have some amazing hot ends on the market, like the Slice Engineering, or how about the new Revo by, by E3D? So this is super old school, does the job, certainly works, but hey, you just spent $800 for a 3D printer and now you've got to pay uh, Slice Engineering and Bontech to get the you know much better hot end assembly? I don't think so. I could talk about the fact that a um, inductive probe is a stupid idea because it fluctuates the readings, the height that it reads the bed fluctuates based on how hot or how cold it is. But hey, they've compensated for that with a you know temperature algorithm that measures the temperature of the actual probe itself and then you know changes the the Z reading based on that. So there's all kinds of smartness and patches built into this thing. But why? Why does it need all that smartness? It's overly complicated. There's the principle from engineering, which is the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. Elon Musk says a similar thing, which is the best part is no part. It can't break, it'll never fail, you don't have to replace it, you don't have to pay for it in the first place. So why design a thing that is so complicated? And the answer is because Prusha himself, Joseph, whose name is all over everything, even the frickin' whistle that's the test print, you know, he's just such an egotist, and he has his mindset stuck back in Rep Rap's early days, when the idea was to have a printer that replicates itself, self-replicating printers. And um, he, it's taken him years to grow beyond that mentality. Meanwhile, China has been churning out fundamentally more advanced printers the whole time. Now, I do have to say, I have never in my whole life seen a turd this polished. So incredibly polished. All of the little details that could possibly be addressed have been addressed. But the guys who are, you know, the employees of Joseph himself are forced to work with a fundamentally substandard thing. And they've done a really good job getting it working. And that's why Aprusha is just so functional. It's not because of Joseph, even though his name is on everything. It's because of the employees. What about the bed slinger design? The fact that this bed has to move back and forth, that's a lot of inertial mass to be moving. So this is a very simple design where you just have a gantry and a flat platform for the bed to move on. Makes for inexpensive frames but um, at the cost of some print quality, you get ghosting. And even on these parts that they sent me from Prusa themselves, I saw the ringing, the ghosting uh, coming from the factory. So as good as they are at making you know, print files for their printers, they're still getting ringing at Prusa proper. A much better framed style is the Core XY style that you're seeing there. That is the E3D tool changer in the background inside of that um, insulated box is another Core XY, so that's a much better way of doing things. And hey, Prusa has released their new Prusa XL, and that's a Core XY, so even Prusa knows that uh, the Core XY is a better frame design. I could go into great detail about this control board and the whole electronics package in this and how, hey, you have to add a Raspberry Pi Zero W, which I do plan to do here, but that's an additional thing that you have to do above and beyond. You have to go search the forums and do it. It should come with Wi-Fi capability for $800. Here's one that kills me. This knob design, it works great for your first finger and then you touch with your thumb, but when you need to scroll through menus quickly, this is not as quick as it could be. It's better to do it with your thumb. I came up with this knob design right here. It's a version of the Ender 3 knob where you can quickly scroll through it like that, or you can use your thumb on the little dimple to scroll through it very quickly as well. So that is way faster than this design, but I have seen so many people print this exact knob and put it on their Chinese printers, their Ender 3s and whatnot, because for some reason, the internet thinks that a Prusa is the epitome of a good printer, right down to the knob design. Ugh. There's one more thing I want to do with the physical printer before we talk about Joseph Prusa himself and the company that he's made. And that is a test print. But, you know, you guys have seen tons of test prints. You all know that Prusas make great quality prints. But let's compare those prints to a run-of-the-mill Chinese printer. This is a Focus. Uh, you can follow the link in the description to the review video that I made about this printer. It's nothing special. It's a run-of-the-mill Chinese, um, you know, Mendel-style printer. So what I'm going to do is 
slice my own geometry, it's just gonna be a test cube, we're gonna print it on both the Prusa and the Focus here and see if there's any difference in the quality. So here's the procedure. I've got this Polyterra PLA. I think I've got enough on the roll here for two test prints and I've got identical sliced uh, G-code files. One file for the Prusa, one file for the Chinese printer and I made those on Super Slicer and all I did was change which printer was being printed on. So I might maybe have been able to actually use the exact same G-code, but instead I just sliced it twice, once for Prusa and once for the Chinese printer using identical settings. So this should be the most apples to apples comparison that we can possibly do. While those test prints are happening, I wanna talk about open source because it has a lot to do with Prusa's success. There are champions across the internet of open source, people who really get behind that. And um, Prusa has been able to marry his image or his company's image with open source, even though Prusa is absolutely not representative of what open source stands for. So let me get into that. First of all, uh, to you guys who direct so much negativity, just so much hate at me because you think I'm the enemy of open source. Um, wow, that's just so unjustified and you're not in the right to um, hurt me because you think I say something that disagrees with you. I absolutely 100% support the... Um, motivation behind open source. Hierarchies are bad, okay? Let's spread it out, right? Let's make a more even playing field. Now, I'm not saying to advocate for a completely even playing field, and if anybody has any success, take it away from them. No, nothing like that. You're going to have talented people, but at the same time, we can't allow runaway success to make it so that nobody else can survive in the environment, right? You can't have just a few small key players taking up all the resources. You have to spread them out. And that is why open source exists. It's a protection against monopolies. Go back to the early days of open source, started by Richard Stallman, and uh, read the GNU, GPL 3.0. It's there to keep monopolies from being able to patent things so that nobody else can use them. Contrary to what you might think, open source does not exist to give you free stuff. And I know that a lot of you guys love open source because it means you get free or cheap stuff, but somebody paid the price. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Somebody put in the effort, somebody with more talent than you have and more time than you have to spend on this thing they, they, they put a tremendous amount of care and love into whatever it is to make a thing that you're now getting for free. So you can't go on the internet and hate on somebody like me for saying that that person deserves some recognition and maybe patents aren't a bad thing. But let me pretend for a minute that patents are a bad thing. And I understand the argument that a lot of you guys have and it boils down to this. You think that innovation is just going to happen, that it's just the natural progression of things. Things get better year after year. And if this person didn't do it, then that person would do it. But that's not the case. You wouldn't argue that the game of basketball would have just been where it is were it not for Michael Jordan or Steph Curry or something like that, right? There's so many players that are at the upper echelon, just the most talented guys that change the game. So why is innovation any different? You have to have the, the truly talented guys to, and you have to reward them for spending their time uh, doing the things. But if that wasn't the case and innovation was going to just continue, then the reason open source exists is to prevent anybody from being able to lock up that innovation that was just naturally going to happen anyway. You're preventing people from basically like bridge trolling or domain squatting or yeah, patent squatting or, you know, just reserving a bit of turf that they didn't deserve and preventing the rest of us from being able to reap the benefits of that um, innovation. So that's why open source exists to, to keep that from being locked up. And yet Prusa is locking stuff up. You don't think he is because he's open source and all their, you know, you can go download all the source files for everything that Prusa has done. But why is it that nobody except Triangle Labs is actually copying Prusa? Why does nobody else have the automatic algorithm to calibrate the printer when you when you start up the printer? Why does nobody else use a Pinda style probe? Why does um, everybody accuse the Ender 3 of being a clone of the Prusa i3 Mark III? It's not, it's not. There's a th printer called the, the Mendel Max and that's the predecessor to the Ender 3. So they're parallel um, evolutions, both of them coming from the original Mendel made by Dr. Ed Sells. So instead of patenting, Prusa is using the court of public opinion, the internet, and this mob of hate 
sock puppets maybe, fanboys for sure, people that will troll the internet and protect Prusa's interests and lock other people out of the arena so that you cannot innovate in the space because Prusa owns that innovation. So Prusa is 100% in violation of the spirit of open source, even though Prusa is not violating the GPL. And all of this is plain to see by anybody who just takes a second to look at the t-shirt. Everyone is a maker, only I am a 3D printer. It's all about Prusa's ego. That's why this company exists. It doesn't exist to get good technology into your hands. That's just the vessel through which Prusa, a man who wanted to be a DJ, who wanted to stand on stage and play music for everybody to feed his ego. Instead, he found this platform. All right, let's have a look at those test prints. The first thing to say about these two prints is the time-lapse videos, which you just saw. It looked like the Prusa was printing much more quickly. That's because I got a complete print on camera for the Prusa, and so I had to condense all that footage down, which made it look like the Prusa is moving faster. Now, it is moving faster. I do believe that is the case, and that's because of the acceleration and jerk settings allow this printer to get up to speed more rapidly than this one, which is gonna have slower acceleration and jerk settings. So this was a two hour and 27 minute print. I'm gonna say that this one was probably like two hour and 45 minutes, something like that. And the second thing to say about the time-lapse videos is you noticed that I had to start this print over again. It got to about there and it was peeling up off the bed because I didn't have that first layer set correctly because I have to manually adjust the knobs here to get that just right and it wasn't. So that is perfectly illustrative of the benefits to automatic mesh bed leveling, a feature which this printer lacks. But once you get the bed level and at the correct height, these Chinese printers make really good prints. I designed this test print to really challenge the two printers here and I thought that I was going to showcase the small quality benefits to owning a Prusa, where your part is just slightly higher quality coming off the Prusa than coming off the Chinese one. And that's not the case. I'm very surprised that the Chinese uh, print quality is better in every way. Every way. It's just, it's crazy, you guys. So let's jump right into it. Starting off with these vertical witness lines. You see the diagonal lines there? And those are going to be witnessing the bearing recirculation in the linear motion rod bearings. Hey guys, it's me from the future here to tell you that the diagnosis of the culprit being these linear bearings on the rods is not true. And I know that because I kind of tore this section off of the test print and the diagonal lines line up. So you can see they go from the left side or the Y axis right into the X axis. It's perfectly aligned, which means that it can't be caused by two separate bearings. This axis here being the X axis would have been caused by these bearings, whereas the Y axis would have been caused by the bearings on the rods here for the bed. So we wouldn't have perfect alignment if it was caused by the bearings. Instead, this is the infamous inconsistent extrusion issue that Prusa has been plagued with. And one fantastic explanation for this issue was posited by Mihai Design. I'll link his video in the description down below. However, I suspect it's something different. I think that this is caused by the direct drive from the stepper motor uh, to the feeder. So the hob gear is attached to the stepper motor. And hob gear is a, the hobbed gear. What is a hob gear? That's kind of weird nomenclature, but that's what I'm gonna call that that part that grabs the filament and pushes it in. And the fact that it's directly attached to the stepper motor means that the stepper motor is cogging. So this is a 0.9 degree stepper motor, which means that every 0.9 degrees, there's a strong pull. But in between those 0.9 degrees, the motor does not have as much torque. So what you're seeing here is those lines are when the poles get close to aligning in the stepper motor and they have a lot more strength. So they sort of whoop and the stepper motor is able to exert more force, more torque uh, in those instances. So uh, this is not inconsistent extrusion. In fact, it's very consistent in the pattern that it makes. So I would actually call this intermittent pulsation of the extruder. And the solution is just to have a geared extruder. So there should be a pancake motor here with the gearbox in between instead of what you're seeing here. All right, back to the video. You know what's happening here? Prusa is basically just a reseller. All of these components are coming from China and um, so Prusa has to mark them up. They have to double the price. So you could just buy them directly from China and get lower cost. So the um, 
part cooling on these bridges here. You see the bridging and it looks good. It looks as good as anything out there. Um, it's hard to flex that out of the way. You guys can see some drooping here on the longest one, that being almost 100 millimeters. The um, ringing of the parts, you can see right there, that's the perfectly vertical lines. And uh, the ringing down here, you're not gonna see any of it because every 10 millimeters, I increased the print speed. And you guys can see those slight changes in, um, in print speed there, the, the way it shines on the surface. So the original print file was set to be uh, 70 millimeters per second up here, print speed, and I printed at 236%, so that's like 150 or so-ish millimeters per, per second up here. So uh, yeah, not bad ringing. And the reason the ringing doesn't just persist at those high print temperatures is because what's even more important than print speed is going to be the acceleration and the jerk settings, which are set in firmware, and that's one of those things that's just tuned for you from Prusa. This top here, I have no idea why it's got such bad print quality. Maybe I got a jammed nozzle, plugged nozzle or something? Me from the future again, and I've diagnosed this problem in the top layer as being um, reduced extrusion or under extrusion. And I know this because here's a magnifying glass with an LED, and you can actually see the LED through uh, the print, which means that we really aren't squeezing out enough filament. There's an easy solution to fix this problem, tighten down that bolt, and I've since done that, so this is no longer an issue. All right, back to the video. The overhangs here, this was meant to be where Prusa was going to shine because of the split part cooling. But if we look at the spire here, we're gonna see that it's the part cooling is not as good as it could be. I've, I've gotten better results out of smaller part cooling fans uh, from China. That's it's really not looking very good. You can see just above my finger there is where the, the nastiness really starts. And the final thing to test is going to be that skew compensation. So if I put the, um, the caliper here from corner to corner and tighten that down, let's have a look-see. It's going to be 140.52, 140.52, on the Chinese printer, we're looking at 140.55, 140.67. So there's no difference between the Prusa and the Chinese printer as far as the skewed the parallelogram nature of the part. By the way, don't worry about this concavity in the, in the prints here. That's happening because the lower portion of this print is a single wall. I just wanted to print quickly to do the ghosting or ringing test. Speaking of which, this looks really good, you guys. You can see the first 10 millimeters, so the first speed layer here has no ringing, and then there's an ever so slight amount of ringing in all subsequent layer heights. So those acceleration and jerk settings are the limiting factor here. Uh, I was never really achieving, I don't think, 150 millimeters per second. I did up the speed on this one also to 235%. So uh, yeah, that's gonna happen. And you notice no diagonal lines, so the quality difference between these two is um, noticeable. There's there's the Prusa, there's the Chinese printer. The part cooling on the bridging is uh, every bit the same as what you're gonna get out of the Prusa uh, here on the 100 millimeter long bridge. And the overhangs are also extremely similar. That's the Chinese printer. And that's the Prusa. You can see the part cooling here from the Chinese printer just coming from the one side versus the split part cooling here on the Prusa. But it didn't have any effect on the printing of this overhang here in the back despite being in the wind shadow of the nozzle. And the spire here is showing superior part cooling to the Prusa. Look at, look at how much better this spire looks than this one. And finally, the top layer here has no weird issues like what I'm seeing on the Prusa over here. So the part cooling on this printer is going to have substantially more flow, and that explains why the spire is so much more cleanly printed, but it also explains why the concavity on the face here is more pronounced than it is on the Prusa. The Prusa has the split part cooling, which I really like, and in fact, I implemented split part cooling on my printers years ago, so way before Prusa was doing it, uh, that just shows you how much faith I have in split part cooling. But even though there's a very large blower fan here, the path that the ear has to travel in this uh, part cooling fan duct is very restrictive, and so the flow is going to be greatly diminished, which explains why there's less concavity here and the spire is far uglier than on the Chinese printer. 
So if you watch 3D printer channels here on YouTube, chances are that you've seen this guy. He's up and coming for sure. He's doing really great work. I've seen him around and I like what he does. He's He is creative. He lives up to his name. So I like this guy. And because he's using a Prusa, I think it's an i3 Mark III that he's using, um, but he's using Prusa printers. So they featured him uh, here on their live cast, which was yesterday for me. I don't know when you're watching this, but here, let's watch an excerpt from the video. I, I generally just like love the last model I made most, but one <laughs> that like is very near and dear to my heart is this guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Automata. How did, you, exactly. how did you make, uh, yeah, the, basically, how did you translate the motion into two different parts of the model? Um, a worm it, gear? Yeah, there's a worm gear on the bottom. It's hard for me to show you on okay. this model. But then it's it all transfers off of the crank, transfers to this gear, and then yep. this gear transfers to the treads with, through a worm gear, mm -hmm. and it transfers up to the arms through like the top oh, yeah. mechanism yeah. here. Yeah, this is like this is kind of like my mascot, my like kind of like favorite thing. I'm actually working right now on turning this into a massive um, like remote control version, mm -hmm. which I'm gonna try to print in full color. So there will be some color, but I have these like stickers, which I want to try to like make a physical version of the sticker. It looks nice. Nice. So so I hope I don't uh, hijack your brain, but I think. There, there were all the needed pieces for making automata uh, in, in in the three D printing community. So we have the winding mechanisms from all the watches. Mm -hmm. I think I think there are some music boxes. Uh, you you have the you have the moving part. So we we can actually make a fully three D printable automata. I think. Don't don't give him ideas. He's not gonna sleep. The... <laughs> He's gonna think about uh, I'll it. Just, I'll just put it on the bottom of the list. Yeah, so yeah. Of... I'll just put it on the bottom of the list. This guy's a freaking baller. <laughs> Listen to that. Na 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 na. Basically, JBV Creative has made an entire channel doing quite well. Eighty thousand subscribers now uh, on making automata. He does his own work from the ground up. He gets into his CAD program, he draws all the gears, he does all of this, right? He is very skilled. Making automata is not easy. It's not easy. So just how insulting is this that Joseph Prusa dismissed a guy who's got 80,000 subscribers, whose channel's growing like crazy, he just dismissed his work and said, oh, by the way, in the Prusa community, we have all of these uh, things already available to download and you can just assemble them like Legos. You can just go, I'll take this from here and this from here and, blah, 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 and it'll just work as an automata. That's not the way this works. Automata are incredibly difficult to get to work and you can't just take pre-made parts and get them, throw them together and do what this guy's doing. It's such an insult. Like if you are creative and if you are not insulted for JBV creative, then, uh, then you're not paying attention. This is an egotist who doesn't want anybody else to be skilled or to be good at what they do. Just watch JBV's face as Prusha's telling him that he's not special. Watch the insult register in JBV's soul. In the 3D printing community. So we have the winding mechanisms from all the watches. Mm -hmm. I think I think there are some music boxes. Uh, you, you, have the, you have the moving part. So we, we can actually make a fully 3D printable automata, I think. Mm -hmm. If you have a dream and something that you love, don't let Joseph Prusha see it. He will kill it because it threatens his ego. Let's talk about body language for a minute. If you say something and you cover your mouth as you're saying it, it means you can't believe these words are coming out of your mouth or you're subconsciously trying to repress the thing that you can't help but saying, right? Here's a, a website. This is just I randomly Googled it and this is what it has to say on it. It's it's a deceitful gesture. You're it's indicating that you're lying or you're being dishonest. So now that we know that little tidbit about body language, let's watch the interaction again, paying attention to Joseph himself. So, so I hope I don't uh, hijack your brain, but I think there, there were all the needed pieces for making automata uh, in, in, in the 3D printing community. A little bit of covering them out there. Not too much. It could be, hmm, thinking. Hmm, that could, it's just one finger, right? It is. So we have the winding mechanisms from all the watches. I think I think there are some music boxes. Uh, you you have the you have. There's the whole mouth. Look at the smile. He's covering a smile. The glee. I just put this guy in his place. I owned him and I love it. But I gotta cover that fact. I gotta hide that. I gotta be deceitful about it. The moving part. So we we can actually make a fully three D printable automata. I think. 
And don't don't sure. give him high. And now that he's released the insult, look at him. Look at his lackey for moral support. See, the thing about an egotist is they're very insecure. And so he needs that lackey. That guy there is partially responsible for Joseph's behaviors. Nicholas Zuza, I guess, is his name. So congratulations, Nicholas, for helping Joseph to be the stellar human being that he is, for supporting him in his moments of insecurity. Now let me play devil's advocate and defend Joseph Prusha here. Printables.com, right here in, in the title for this video. That's what the live stream was all about, right? So Printables.com here is Joseph Prusha's answer to Thingiverse, okay? So yeah, I can see how he's basically trying to steer the conversation away from what JVB, JBV Creative has made into, hey, go to uh, printables.com and you can download all of these components. But this printables.com thing is, mm, it's problematic. Printables by Joseph Prusha. Really, Joseph, did you program this website? Did you get in there in Python and script it? I don't think so. I don't think you have the talent. Um, yeah, I don't. And also, look at this. Printables.com came out well after Thingiverse came out. And we have uh, had a problem with Thingiverse in the hobby in the past because people who like open source don't like the fact that MakerBot defected to Stratasys, which was kind of the, the, the version of like Microsoft, the big evil monopoly in the 3D printer space. So the fact that um, MakerBot owns Thingiverse uh, kind of turned a lot of people off. But Prusa is no better. He's no better. And his company's no better than um, MakerBot. Okay. You're going to argue with me. Oh, he's open source. He's better. But he's not. See, the spirit of open source means that you openly share and you let everybody use your stuff. Prusa, time and again, is showing that he just wants to swallow up everything of value in the 3D printer industry. He doesn't want there to be anybody else except for him. And it's him. It's not his company. It's him by Joseph Prusa. Look at it right there. By Joseph Prusa. It's not the company. It's not a group effort. It's one man. And if we didn't have Thingiverse because it has problems, well, hey, we have My Mini Factory. If you are creative, they're uh, giving you a channel to to get paid for your work. You can charge for your CAD models here on My Mini Factory. Then, of course, there's Thangs. I really like what Thangs is doing. They have a great display, a 3D uh, rotating uh, display um, that they're that they're using here on their website, and they're indexing all of the models that you would find on Thingiverse are on my are on uh, Thangs, so you can. It's a great search engine now. It's turning into that. So I really like Thangs. So there's at least three alternatives. One of which was around well before Prusa made his, and these are all better than than Printables by Joseph Prusa. Do not feed Joseph's ego. Don't use these free tools. You're just allowing him to swallow up the entire hobby. You're giving him the power and control to um, to take it away when the time comes. Right now, he's all still open source, right? But that's how dictators always play. They play nice until they are in power, until they have the power to yank it away from you, and then they play mean. So how can an ego as ugly as Joseph Prusa's have guys like these two here um, working for him? Well, money and power attract lackeys, minions. So these guys, they're probably perfectly nice human beings. I'm not trying to insult them. Prusa is from the Czech Republic. The Czech Republic was a satellite state to the USSR. Never part of the actual USSR, but it might as well have been, right? So three generations, not even like two and a half generations removed from when the Berlin Wall fell from the USSR. There is a, and, and, and before that, there's just countless generations of history in this part of the world with dictatorial leaders. Now today, in today's era, we call this strongman leadership. And the culture there doesn't know anything else. They don't know this distributed d democratic model. Now, we have a ha hard time with democracy right now. Our country's struggling, but democracy is still the thing. We still spread it out instead of having a really steep, narrow pyramid with one guy at the top and a few lackeys underneath who all get to have all the power and all the benefits of, of whatever the society is creating. We try to spread the wealth out more evenly. And that's a good thing. That's the way it should be. So strongman leadership is, is the enemy of American values. It really is. You know who else is a strongman leader from that part of the world? Vladimir Putin. So Joseph Prusa is the Vladimir Putin of 3D printing. Think about it. Look, here's a video. This is supposed to be a joke. I've had this criticism about Joseph Prusa's ego, how he's the only one that works there at Prusa. And so they made a video, which is supposed to be a joke, but it's not a joke. This is the way it really is. He is the only person at Prusa. 
we're not meant to know that there's anybody else who works there. There is only Joseph. And that's what this video is supposed to be parroting. But instead of parroting, instead of making a parody, why not give credit and glorify some of the workers who work for you, Joseph? Why not thank them for their contribution, for making your company and your printers great? Because it's not great because of you, it's great in spite of you. Again, let me play devil's advocate and say, it's his company. He can do what he wants. Fair enough, that's true. But you can't do what you want when it's not your company, when you haven't paid the people uh, to do the work for you, when the, when the agreement from the get-go isn't that way. If you do a Google search for Marlin, site Prusa3D.com, in other words, you're scraping just the Prusa website for the word Marlin, the only thing you're gonna find is users posting how they uh, use Marlin or how they wanna tweak Marlin, this or that, the other, and they're all old posts. 2018 is the newest version that I can find. 2017, you won't find anywhere credit given to Scott Latine or the Marlin, other members of the Marlin team who created the firmware that runs Joseph Prusa's printers, okay? That firmware is massively important to how well the printers function. And granted, Prusa has hired um, software engineers to rewrite, but they the, the original code base is still there. 50%, 75%. How much did they actually rewrite, right? So there's a massive, massive amount of credit and money that should be paid to Scott Latine for his efforts. Instead, Prusa is making somewhere between one and $5 million per month by what I can tell. He's got 600 employees, but he's cutting Scott Latine and Marlin out of the history books. Had nothing to do with his success. What about Octoprint? Another external program that had nothing to do with Prusa, right? This, this, this creator, she made this great plugin that everybody loves and Joseph Prusa said, hey, that's open source, mine. Took it in the house, had his software engineers tweak it, change it up, and now they put Prusa's name on this as well. If you go looking for Octoprint on the Prusa website, what you're gonna find is this little thing that says, we can't support it. They make it sound like it's gonna break your printer if you're using Octoprint, because they don't want you to use Octoprint, because they don't control it. He doesn't control it. So, if not a Prusa, what printer do I recommend? Just get an Ender 3, you guys. Get the base model Ender 3. Here it is for a $170 USD today. That's $10 cheaper than I paid for it like a couple months ago. So I think it fluctuates based on the currency exchange between China and the United States. And yeah, don't get tricked by the Ender 3 Pro name or the Ender 3 X41 or whatever all the other versions of the Ender 3 that are out there. Get the cheapest base model. That's this one right here. And um, yeah, you can upgrade it from there. Look, there are so many uh, ways to upgrade it, but I suggest, of course, this project of mine here, where for $20, just $20, you can get touch probing of the bed, along with filament runout detection. Those are the two useful features that the Ender 3 lacks. And once you put those on there, it's not a hard project. It's a lot less fiddly than um, all the time you're going to spend to build up the Prusa i3 Mark III. And you got to print your own upgrades. How cool is that? So um, this is a much better thing for you as the home hobbyist to do. Now, what if you are going to run a print farm? Why not do the same thing? It's basically the same criteria that you're looking at. You want to make money on a print farm, which means you want to have the least capital expenditure. So why would you spend $1,000 per printer to get 10 Prusa printers? That's $10,000. You can get 10 Ender 3s for $2,000. That's a no-brainer. And then using this little upgrade here that, that I did, uh, it's like 20 extra bucks per printer, like so cheap. And you're gonna get the same quality of prints out to your customers. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me why anybody would spend the money on a Prusa, except that you want that top of the line thing. You wanna feel like you own something that nobody can beat. But here's the thing, the Voron printers, they beat the Prusa printers in every way. This is a phenomenal project started by a computer scientist in Santa Cruz, California, and now it's open sourced and it's got a lot of people involved in this community. And there are uh, there are kits that you can get from China if you don't wanna get the entire build of materials yourself. There are many uh, videos about this, but this is gonna be fiddly like the i3 Mark III. There's lots of little parts to it. There's lots of details to figure out. So this is for sure a project, but in the end, you will end up with a superior printer to the Prusa. So start with an Ender 3, figure out if this is the hobby for you. Then move on to a Voron when you wanna really get into this and make the best possible machine that you can.
a Google Trends search for the two most popular search terms relating to the Prusa i3 Mark III or the Creality Ender 3, you want to compare those two printers together, right? Yields this graph here. And you can see the red line being Prusa and the blue line being the Ender 3. Isn't that interesting how much more popular the Ender 3 is than the Prusa? And that is because there's a wisdom to the crowd and everybody knows that you're much better off getting an Ender 3. One interesting thing to note is down here around June, of 2018 is when I released my first video about the Ender 3, telling you guys it was a great deal and you should absolutely go out and get one. So I know a good thing when I see it, I know something that's gonna get better and better as time goes on. Case in point, remember in January 7th of 2020, when I recommended that you guys all go buy Tesla stock, that would have been right there on the graph. So you would have been quite wealthy had you followed my advice Thankfully, I take my own medicine. But back to the graph here, you would think that you would be allowed to make fun of Prusa more online and not make fun of the Ender 3 because the Ender 3 is clearly more popular. There's clearly more people in your camp if you are an Ender 3 supporter versus a Prusa supporter. And yet, if you go on to any forum anywhere and try to hate on Prusa, you will be met with um, a whole lot of resistance coming right back at you. And it gets pretty vitriolic, at least it has in the past. These days, I think it's a bit more tame, but case in point, there's this post from just under three months ago, or I guess just over three months ago, uh, on the subreddit for 3D printing, which says, unpopular opinion, stop buying Ender 3s as a first printer or don't recommend it to beginners. So, you know, there's a lot of misinformation here. Filament eats through the tension arm on the Bowden extruder. That's not the case. All the new Bowden extruders being shipped from China have this metal grommet inset in the plastic and the, and the, the filament can't eat through that metal grommet anymore than it can eat through the Prusa 3D prints there. So, so um, this is some antiquated information and yet nobody's correcting it and it got 38 upvotes, which doesn't seem like a lot, but for this subreddit, that's a decent amount. Well, a little less than a month ago, I posted this. Can we stop recommending Prusa i3 Mark III to noobs? It isn't worth the price and isn't great for open source, to which I got zero upvotes. It actually was negative. They just don't show negative results because, you know, everything's just like YouTube doesn't show negative uh, down, thumbs down anymore. So, yeah, I got lots of hate for saying basically the same thing that this guy was saying about the Ender 3. So you're not allowed to criticize Prusa in online forums, which stands in stark contrast to the popularity indicated by this graph. Something stinks. Something is fishy and it smells like manipulation to me. But there is some justice in the end. It looks like Creality reaped more benefit from the hype that Prusa attempted to generate around the new Prusa XL printer than Prusa themselves reached. This was the release of all those videos showing the Prusa XL and Prusa's searching pr quickly dropped off right there back to its baseline, whereas Creality kept growing and growing and peaked several days later. If you are a content creator, this graph should tell you everything you need to know. Don't be featuring Prusa printers. It's not gonna get you the views. People wanna see stuff about Creality. And all those positive comments that you get on your Prusa related videos are suspect. They're probably fake. Same goes for the negative comments left on my videos. So there you have it, the Prusa Mendel i3 Mark III, a phenomenally polished, very functional 3D printer that mm, isn't worth the money. And this is the flagship product of a company whose raison d'etre very much seems to be aggrandizing the ego of a man of some talent and no credentials who is hell-bent on becoming the strong man of 3D printing. He does not deserve such a position, and I don't think if he achieved such a position would be uh, beneficial to the rest of us. Strong men tend to create hierarchies under them where the vast majority of people in such a domain lose out, and only the hierarchy gains. So I do not understand you guys who are actual Prusa fanboys. You make no sense to me. You're, um, quasi-religious or something crazy like that. I just, I can't get it. So, um, if you are such a type who is going to leave hateful comments here on this video, I challenge you to be introspective. Look at yourself and see if you are not on the wrong side. If you are not representing the side that is um, predatory 
or a bully or any of those things. That'll do it for this video. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters. These guys keep me making content, but also an especially big thank you to my executive producer and producers. These guys really keep me motivated. And with that, I'm gonna say have a great day. See you in the next video, bye.